Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Recording artist charged with murder in St. Anne. A recording artist has been charged with murder following the stabbing death of a call center worker in St. Anne on Friday. Charged is 32-year-old Troy Walker of a St. Anne address. The deceased has been identified as 22-year-old Andre McDonald. Reports from the Bronx Sun Police are that about 12.20 a.m., both men were at a function in their community when an argument developed between them. During the altercation, Walker allegedly used a pair of scissors to stab McDonald. McDonald left the function and later returned to Walker's home with a knife where he attacked him. A tussle ensued, citizens intervened, and the now deceased man was seen lying on his back in a pool of blood. He was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Walker was apprehended and subsequently charged on Friday after a question and answer session and an identification parade. Mad Dog and Girlfriend Charged After Gun Found in Kingston Home A couple has been charged for the seizure of a firearm and seven rounds of ammunition during an operation at their home on Clinkling Avenue, Kingston on Thursday. Charged with unauthorized possession of ammunition are 22-year-old Stephen Brown, otherwise called Mad Dog of Clinkling Avenue, and 29-year-old Jennifer Francis of Williams Crescent in the parish. Reports are that the operation that commenced about 4 a.m. resulted in the seizure of one pistol, 56 9 mm cartridge, or a warrant premises, and four 5.56 cartridges inside a room occupied by the couple. Three people, including Brown and Francis, were taken into custody. Investigation continues into the seizure of the weapon and additional ammunition. The third person and man remains in custody. Senate passes bill to change retirement age for DPP and AG despite objection from opposition senators. The bill to amend the constitution to raise the age of retirement for holders of the offices of the Director of Public Prosecutions DPP and the Auditor General from 60 to 65 years was passed in the Senate on July 28 despite a lack of support from opposition senators. The Constitutional Act 2023 to facilitate the change have been approved by the law house on Tuesday. Speaking on the matter in the upper house, opposition Senator Lambert Brown said the government should allow for the proper procedural course for the passing of the bill as it was done unconstitutionally. He said the house should allow for more discussion on the bill and await the decision of the Supreme Court on the matter. In response, government Senator Mattis Samuda defended the bill, saying it is necessary to address inconsistencies in legislation regarding the age of retirement for civil servants. I believe the suspension of the standing order today ought not to be agreed to. And we as senators should allow the co-equal branch, the judiciary, to make their pronouncement on Monday. My position is don't rush this bill. Allow for the people to have a say. Allow for the senators to be able to consult with the citizens. Allow us to exercise our independence in an informed manner. I say, don't rush this bill. I will vote no, and those opposition senators present will divide to show to the country that the seven hours present will vote no against this postponement of the standing orders. We will also divide so the country will know by name who voted for and who voted against what, to me, is an abuse of the parliamentary process. It's an abuse of the constitution. And that I, like the rest of you, swore that we will uphold the constitution and laws of Jamaica. Mr. President, those who are willing to play politics with the constitution ought not to be allowed so to do. And if they insist on doing it, we in opposition representing the people of Jamaica who have not been consulted will stand with the people of Jamaica and say that this is an abuse, allow the standing orders to run its course, do not suspend it, don't rush this bill. May it please you, Mr. President, as I await Monday's decision of the full court of the Supreme Senator Court Brown. in this matter. You can shut me down on that, yeah. but Monday come in. Established ceiling for that age for the retirement of the Auditor General and the DPP is actually five years shorter in duration when compared to the upper limit set in the Pensions Public Service Act for a public officer in the civil service and indeed 
10 years shorter than that of a high court judge and a judge on the court of appeal. Proposed amendments to the Constitution will allow for the expansion of the term of service from 60 to 65 years, thereby addressing the inconsistency that currently exists between the two pieces of legislation and by extension creating a more level playing field for all. Specialized burn units among upgrades to come from UHWI stated Dr. Tufton. I think that, that Ms. McKenzie's story of 19 surgeries and life is an indication of the tremendous work that our own local healthcare infrastructure, including the doctors, have done to secure life and livelihood for persons who have been unfortunate to meet in this. And so there is a misnomer that we have no burn unit in Jamaica or no burn center. And I think this clears that up. In fact, we do have facilities at the UWI, you saw that. We have a facility at Bustamante Hospital for Children, Cornwall Regional Hospital, and KPH. We see about a thousand, I'm told, patients a year, most of them not severe, and the current infrastructure is able to treat with these patients, but we do have the severe burns. And for that reason, this burn unit, an advanced unit, as you have seen and heard about, is necessary to save lives. And for that reason, I fully endorse it, the Ministry of Health. We are embarking on modernizing our society. And I dare say again, in the interest of supporting my government. We do have a major plan for the expansion of the University Hospital of the West Indies. This year, we expect to reroute the Ring Road. That is going through the procurement process, about 500 million committed. Next year, we're going through the procurement process to add a tower, a six-story tower, brand new and equipped, which will see significant additional capacity in terms of operating theater space and so on. What I saw there on the video doesn't reflect the new dispensation and the new vision. What we need is a burn unit that's modern and that complements the expansion, almost 30 or 40 million US that will take place, hopefully starting next year. The University Hospital of the West Indies needs to be modernized, and I think in the context of that modernization program, the burn unit is absolutely critical. And of course, the ultimate goal is to provide greater life-saving capacity for the people of Jamaica. Black River Hospital to be upgraded. Plans are in place to upgrade the Black River Hospital in St. Elizabeth from a Type C facility to a Type B. We are upgrading the entity to a Type B hospital and we are now in the process of looking at securing the design of new additional facilities and architectural work which will then lead to the build-out, Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Chris Patofton stated. He made the announcement at the official commissioning of the digital retrofit system at the facility on Friday. The move to a Type B facility will usher in a host of improvements for the hospital with a focus on increased services and enhanced patient care. What a Type B means is that we add a greater number of services such as lab services and more specialized offerings all of which require the necessary space and infrastructure, Tufton explained. He added that a suitable space accommodate the enhanced services has been identified at the back of the hospital. Tufton said the impending development marks a positive turning point for the institution and the community it serves. He points out that with Black River being the capital of the parish and with the population on the rise, access to improved healthcare services is of utmost importance for the town. We are going to make sure that it happened because you deserve it, he stated. In the meantime, Tufton lauded the Southern Regional Health Authority for the procurement of over 37 million digital retrofitting system for the hospital. It is in keeping with the transformation we are pursuing in public hospital. This system will be adding one additional piece of capacity to an institution that is well worth it because of the vital role that it plays in the parish, the minister stated. There are several benefits to be derived from this system, including faster image acquisition, better workflow, superior image quality, less radiation exposure for patients, better monitoring of patient radiation dose, reduced operation cost, faster image distribution, and less storage needs. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell.